Welcome to the Lone Star College Football Show. I'm your host, Chris Daly. Each episode, I will bring you news and information about college football in Texas, not just the FBS school, anyone who plays college football in the great state of Texas. I will do so by talking with the people making it happen on the gridiron, the head coaches, the staff, the players, but mostly the head coaches. Thank you for joining us. In fact, today I have an interview with Coach Casey Keeler of Sam Houston State University. Sam Houston State has been an FCS power, but they're making a move to FBS. And we have to take a second to thank our title sponsor this year, Junior Smokehouse. Yeah, Junior Smokehouse, you you can find at juniorsjerky.com. They have everything you can imagine, pork and venison sausage, beef sausage, all kinds of great dried meats, jerkies, wonderful spices, rubs, you name it. In fact, you have to go check out the website just to figure it out. There's great gift boxes, and I have to tell you, if you want to guarantee that your gift is ready by Christmas, make sure you go online and place your order before December 13th. They get very busy sending out uh, probably the most wonderful gift you can give somebody for Christmas. Some beef jerky, some dried sausage, some good manly food. That's Junior Smokehouse on Highway 59 in Texas between Wharton and El Campo. But, again, you can buy, find all of it online at juniorsjerky.com. You can also reach owner Lane Tabola and his staff at 979-531-0888. You can order online. You can order on the phone. You can go by like I do. Luckily, I'm so close to it. And check out some of the amazing processed meats they have. Such good stuff. That's Junior's Texas Best Smokehouse. All right, everybody, join me in welcome, welcoming Coach Casey Keeler from Sam Houston State University to the show. Coach, how are you doing today? Chris is doing awesome, man. Getting ready to play some football this weekend. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. If you could uh, give our our audience a little background on you, you've been with uh, the Bearcats for a little while now, right? My ninth season. Uh, so I've been a head coach at three different stops. Um, this is my 29th year as a head coach. I was a head coach at a little school in South Jersey called Rowan University. Uh, we played for five national championships. We were in the final four in the country, seven of my nine years there. Then I had an opportunity to go to my uh, alma mater, the University of Delaware, and we mm-hmm. won the 03 national championship and played for two other national championships there. I had a first rounder in Joe Flacco and then uh, came to uh, Sam Houston after commentating for ESPN for a year. Um, and this is our, we finished eight season coming up on nine. Uh, we, uh, just got done having the greatest calendar year in the history of college football, winning 21 games, a national championship and three conference championships, championships in a 10 month period. And we are now making the jump to FBS. Uh, so this wow. is a transition year for us, Chris. Definitely. Definitely. And that's going to have some, <laughs> its own little twist to it. Uh, talk about, your offense because i've got on here you you led the nation in total offense in 01 2014 and 2016 yeah so so uh i've been blessed to have a lot of really talented players and i think last year we were third in the country in scoring the fcs now the interesting thing with us is i lost almost that entire offensive staff my offensive coordinator mm-hmm. became the head coach of delaware and uh four of our, our staff members went along with him so well, we have a new offensive coordinator. This is my fourth offensive coordinator uh, in my eight years here. And all the previous three offensive coordinators all ended up in the top three in scoring at some point um, in their time here. Uh, John Perry, who mm-hmm. is a former Texan uh, wide receiver coach, spent seven years with Bill O'Brien. Uh, he is uh, our offensive coordinator. And uh, it's interesting um, – my last three offensive coordinators, including John, all have a New Hampshire background. Uh, huh. All had worked with Chip Kelly or were hired by Chip Kelly 
uh, before Chip left New Hampshire to go to Oregon. So, um, so there's a lot of similarities in the offense we've been in the past, pra- the past uh, three offensive coordinators. So, uh, but yeah, a lot of moving parts with us. A lot of new coaches, not, not a lot of new players. You know, Chris, we gave out our um, our rings for winning 21 games in 2021, mm-hmm. and we only gave out 48 out of a 110 man roster in training camp. So mm-hmm. we have we have 40 brand new scholarship players and 62 brand new players on the roster. Um, and so you can see we uh, we're in, in transition a little bit right here in number number of ways. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned uh, your coaching tree, and to me, I've always been fascinated by those. Uh, you know, uh, Hal Mummy's a good friend of mine, and and he um, his coaching tree does the same. A whole lot of offense across a whole lot of places. Yeah, I've been blessed. I mean, you know, Dan Lanning, the new head coach at Oregon, was uh, worked for me here my second year. Uh, he was a safeties coach for us, and Neil Brown, the head coach of West Virginia, was my wide receiver coach. And I got Kyle Flood over there at Texas, was my offensive line coach. So I've been really blessed to have a lot of really, really outstanding coaches uh, to work with me. Sweet. Now let's talk about your team. Uh, who? What did you lose to graduation? What can we look at this year? Uh, who should we be paying attention to? Well, we lost uh, 11 All-Americans. Uh, five guys signed to NFL contracts. Uh, nice. Two of our, our players made the NFL. One was a fifth-round draft choice by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Zion McCollum and his twin bu- brother Tristan just made the practice squad with the Texans. Uh, graduated one of the best receivers in the country and the best punt returner maybe I've ever seen in Jaquez Azard. He was with the Washington Generals, um, or Commanders, I guess it is, the Washington Commanders, up until mm-hmm. uh, uh, pulling a hamstring, I believe it was. Um, so yeah, we, we graduate a lot of really good players. Eric Schmidt is, is someone that if you follow us at all would know, people would know, uh, he was our all American quarterback and he decided to uh, graduate and, and move on with his life. Ramon Jefferson, who was a first team all American tailback, uh, transferred to university of Kentucky, graduated from our place, was a first team all American, you know, won the national championship and in the world of the portal and the fact that we're not playing for anything this year, he decided to take that opportunity. So we graduate uh, a really talented, maybe as talented a group of players I've ever been around, but mm-hmm. I feel really good that we've done a good job replacing. Um, and I think our talent level is pretty solid, you know, going into this A&M game. Nice. And and who, um, who are some of the players we should uh, pay attention to offense and defense? Well, I think you're, you're going to really like Des Jackson. Des was a, uh, uh, a transfer from Oklahoma State. Um, you know, he actually, you know, first time in my career that I've had a player here for six months and they're voted captain. Um, so it shows you a little bit about, you know, the talent level he has, also the person he is and the work ethic he has. So I think he's an NFL caliber back. Um, he had some really big games at Oklahoma State in his career. And, uh, you know, we have him here with, with the Bearcats. Uh, I thought we did a really good job rebuilding the offensive line. Um, you know, we lost a couple of great players in the secondary. Like I said, two of them, you know, signed NFL contracts or two of them made NFL teams. But we picked mm-hmm. up B.J. Foster. Uh, B.J. Foster uh, is a Texas transfer, started 27 games at Texas, was an honorable mention, Big 12, was the second-ranked safety in the country coming out. Uh, his mom is in our Hall of Fame here uh, as a really? volleyball player. Yep, so we got we were able to get him here. A uh, little family ties sort of thing. So, um, like I said, we we took advantage of the portal, and uh, I also think we brought a great freshman class in. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, we graduated maybe as big a group of seniors as anyone in the country, but at the same time, I feel good about the quality of player that we brought in um, to play. You know, to open up this season and play with A and M. Well, speaking of A and M, what what a tough way to start the last. Uh, these two teams met was 2013, the the year before you took over, and it didn't turn out real well for Sam Houston State. What what do you think is going to happen this time? Yeah, you know, I, I've told our players, I said, you know, it's it's unrealistic to think that we have a chance of beating, you know, Texas A&M. And so yeah. if you're realistic, so if you're realistic, don't get on the bus because right. I don't want realistic guys. I mean, would anyone think a team could win 21 games in 10 months? That's unrealistic. Right. We did that. 
could anyone imagine a team winning three conference championships in 10 months? We did that. That's unrealistic. You know, so that's kind of my theme with our guys is it's unrealistic, but, you know, if you're realistic, you should be playing for me. I mean, <laughs> our mindset is that we're going in and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to win this ball game. I mean, it's not like, hey, moral victories or those things. You know, in the last decade, no one in the state of Texas has won more Division One games than the Bearcats. In the last decade, Chris, we're number six in the nation in wins behind North Dakota State, Alabama, Oklahoma, Ohio State, and Clemson. So there's wow. a lot of pride in this program. You know, I mean, this isn't like, hey, we're going to get a payday. That's not how we can approach life because that's not who we are. So we, we get it. We, we know, you know, they're a top five program nationally. We know that some people have um, uh, voted them number or, or have projected them as maybe possible the eventual national champion. We know the last four years they've had, you know, top five recruiting classes include the number one in the country last year. We know all those things, but, mm -hmm. you know, that, that stuff, we, that can't scare us. That has to just inspire us. Excellent, excellent. So uh, what's the focus going to be on the game? How, how, what is the game plan for dealing with them? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, the big thing is, you know, we have so many new players. And, and what I'm trying to get into their heads is, like, when you go out there in front of 110,000, I mean, take 30 seconds and just soak it all in because, you know what, what a great environment. Then let's yeah. go play a ball game. Let's go win a ball game. Like, let's just take it one play at a time. That's what pe people don't realize. Football is an accumulation of single plays. If mm -hmm. you make that third down, now you're not giving them an opportunity. Now you yeah. can use more clock. Now you're moving the ball further downfield. If you don't make that third down, now you're putting yourself in harm's way of a punt being blocked. Now you're putting yourself in harm's way of giving the ball back to them. It's like, but it, it's all single plays. And one play begets the next play begets the next play. If you, you make a great play, feed off your positive. If something goes against us, you know what? We've got to let that play go and go play the next one. So, um, you know, football, it, there's always adverse adversity, no matter who you're playing. Texas A&M is going to have some adversity on Saturday, and, and the Bearcats are probably going to have a lot of adversity on Saturday. But mm -hmm. it's a matter of just letting that play go and going and play the next play. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that, that, that we talk about. Um, bottom line is, you know, you, you just got to strap it on and, 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 and go fight them toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and that's what we plan on doing. I love it. I love it. Well, Coach KC Keeler, I want to thank you so much for uh, sitting down with me and sharing a little insight. You got it, Chris. It was great talking to you. You too. Take care. All right, bye. This podcast is certified fresh. Freshmediaworks.com. As always, I want to thank Junior Smokehouse, without whom this show would not be possible. If you get a chance, check out JuniorsJerky.com. They have everything, and I mean it. If you like some good smoked meats, brisket, uh, spiced rubs, you name it, they have so many great things. Some sausage uh flavors they have are out of this world i love it and I'm, I'm particularly a fan of the dried sausage which they have a lot of great stuff there too check them out juniorsjerky.com and if you're in the area they're on highway 59 between warden and el campo well worth a stop once again i want to thank you for tuning in i want to thank you for being a fan of college football in the lone star state until next time i'm your host chris daly wishing you a great week and victory for your team.